Russia has no more red lines for France after Macron's announcement. Russian Security Council Deputy Chairman Dmitry Medvedev has warned that Russia will also act without restraint toward France after French President Emmanuel Macron refused to honor any red lines when it comes to supporting Ukraine. The French president said that there should be no restrictions on support for Ukraine, report French outlets Le Monde. He made the comments during a meeting with the leaders of France's political parties. According to Marine Tondelier, the leader of France's Europe Ecology, the Greens Party, Macron stated that Vladimir Putin has no limits and that the limits Ukraine's allies set for themselves give Russia an advantage. We must show that we don't have any limits either, Tondelier quotes Macron as saying. The leader of the French Communist Party, Fabienne Roussel, and the leader of the national rally, Jordan Bardella, said that Macron's words imply there are no more red lines in terms of France's support for Ukraine. Whether Macron himself said there are no more red lines is unclear. Nevertheless, it was precisely these words, citing Le Monde, that Russian Security Council Chairman Dmitry Medvedev took to X to comment on then that means Russia has no more red lines left for France. He concluded his post with a phrase from Roman law, in hostem omina licita, which translates to, against the enemy, everything is permitted. Earlier this week, Macron walked back on comments he made a week earlier that were widely interpreted to mean he supported sending NATO soldiers into Ukraine to fight against Russia. Nothing should be excluded, the French president said, following a gathering of Ukraine's backers in Paris on February the 26th. We will do anything we can to prevent Russia from winning this war. Kremlin spokesperson Dmitry Peskov said Western troops becoming involved in the war would result in the inevitability of a direct confrontation. In this case, it's not going to be about probability, but inevitability, that's how we assess it, Peskov said. Trump rival quits race, former U.S. president calls Biden for a debate anytime, anywhere. Former U.S. President Donald Trump has become the presumptive Republican nominee in the 2024 election after Nikki Haley suspended her campaign following the Super Tuesday primaries. Trump swept 14 out of 15 states that held primaries, with Haley only winning in Vermont. So, Trump stood at 995 Republican convention delegates, more than a tenfold lead over Haley's 89. The time has now come to suspend my campaign, Haley told supporters in Charleston, South Carolina. After this, Trump has called Republican leader Joe Biden for a debate before the election in November, despite the fact that he himself had previously absent himself from a number of Republican primaries. It is important for the good of our country that Joe Biden and I discuss issues that are vital to the United States and its citizens, Trump said and added, I call for a debate anytime, anywhere. During the campaign, Trump dodged five debates with his political opponents. He did not participate in such events, which led to criticism from former candidate Chris Christie, who called Trump a chicken and a loser in an ad. During the campaign, the 77-year-old Trump criticized Biden for verbal errors and stumbles while walking. While the former president himself is also not immune to mistakes during speeches, he recently mistook Nikki Haley and former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. I know Donald Trump wants attention and is trying to expand his popularity outside of his MAGA base said Biden campaign spokesman Michael Tyler. If he's so eager to see President Biden in prime time, he doesn't have to wait. He can join the tens of millions of Americans who will tune to watch State of the Union. We remind you, on March the 5th, US President Joe Biden and former head Donald Trump won the National Party elections in most states. The candidates set the stage for a historic revanche in the general elections in November, despite low ratings of their popularity. After a successful showing in 15 states that elected more than a third of Republican delegates on Super Tuesday, Trump virtually guaranteed himself a third consecutive presidential nomination despite multiple criminal charges. 
Ukraine has some pleasant surprises in store for Putin on the battlefield, U.S. State Department. Ukraine has a plan that they can execute to achieve victories on the battlefield and surprises are still awaiting the Russians, U.S. State Department spokesman Matthew Miller told. The comments come after Under Secretary of State Victoria Nuland said in January that Putin is going to get some nice surprises on the battlefield. Miller cited Ukraine's recent sinking of Russian Black Sea Fleet ships as an example of these surprises. We believe that Ukraine has a plan that they can execute to achieve victories on the battlefield, she said. We've seen them having victories on the battlefield, most recently in the Black Sea, where they sunk another Russian ship. So, we do believe that they have some surprises in store. We look forward to seeing the results. Russia lost another major ship in the Black Sea after the 65 million US dollar Sergei Kotov patrol ship was hit and sunk by Ukrainian Magura V5 drones. Earlier, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky said that there are more surprises coming for Russia's military assets in the Black Sea. The Ukrainian leader said that among Kyiv's goals for 2024 was to continue our successful story on the Black Sea. And we will do it, Zelensky said. I will not go deeply into details, but they will get some surprises. That's very important. Ukraine ramped up its attacks on Russia's infrastructure stationed in the Crimean Peninsula in recent months which served as a launching pad for Moscow's invasion of Ukraine. Kiev has particularly homed in on Russian President Vladimir Putin's Black Sea Fleet, claiming that its forces have disabled about a third of the Kremlin's naval warships since the start of the battle. <laughs>